Up next on Cooking Class for the Working Class is a fresh filet of cod franchise with mushrooms and lemon butter sauce. Hey there, I'm Chef John and I'm a real life working professional chef. And this is Cooking Class for the Working Class Culinary 101. So the first step in making this dish is to take a trip to my favorite farmer's market here in Venice, Florida, where I know I'm always going to get the freshest of fresh fish. Okay, let's get this show on the road. Hey, it's Chef John here, and I want to welcome you to Cooking Class for the Working Class. And in this episode, we're going to make a dish which is made with some fresh cod, and it's going to be franchise style. What that means is we're going to take the cod, and it's going to be dipped in an egg batter, and then sautéed, and it's going to be finished with a lemon butter sauce. I'm going to be serving that today with some broccoli florets and some shaved Reggiana Parmesan cheese. So without further ado, let's get started. First thing we're going to do is get all of our mise en place together. So for this dish, the cod franchise, some of the ingredients that we're going to be using today are red and green bell peppers, fresh lemon. We've got some broccoli, which we're going to cut into florets, beautiful fresh mushrooms, some shaved Reggiano Parmigiana cheese, a couple of eggs, some chicken broth and some fresh chopped chives which we just cut out of the garden and also a little bit of flour which we're going to season up to order as we go along. So that's the, the, that's the short list of the ingredients minus the cod of course. Okay, so I'm going to start by getting the peppers prepped and we're going to prep the broccoli to get that ready to steam. So. Just get my cutting board all lined up here. Okay. And okay, the green bell peppers, I've already rinsed those off. So uh, you always want to wash your fresh vegetables in the beginning. Uh, it, it, never hurt, it never fails. Even if you, you go to the supermarket and you see uh, that the little misters are going on, you still want to rinse off everything because of pesticides and any number of reasons. Okay, so uh, throughout the course of my videos, you're going to see what's called uh, three T's, which is tips, tricks, and time savers. So throughout this course, I'm going to be naming a couple of different types of tricks and tips and time saving ideas, which I have learned throughout the past 42 years or so of cooking. And it's all designed to help make the working class be able to eat a nice, healthy, manageable, affordable meal when they come home for work at the end of each day. Now, I love to cook, um, and I also love fresh fish. So living here in Florida, we've got um, many, many, many a wealth of ideas of places to go. Farmers markets, fish markets, the whole nine yards. So. Anytime that's available, there's always an abundance of fish that we can choose from. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do is, we're gonna, uh, for today, we're gonna just dice the peppers up just a little bit, because that's going to be going with our broccoli saute. And the fun part of this is when I cook, and especially when I cook at home, I try to make things fun. So there's no right or wrong way to dice up a pepper or to dice up an onion or anything for that matter. So all, all that we're trying to do here is get it as uniform as we possibly can. And we're not looking for perfection again, but if you get it nice and uniform, you have to remember that everything that you're cooking has its own cooking time. So if you've got really big pieces of green bell pepper and little tiny pieces of green bell pepper, uh, 
what's going to happen is the little pieces are going to just get way, way, way overcooked and they're going to be, um, become mushy or actually just get lost in your sauce or whatever you're doing. So as you can see, I'm just trying to dice as uniform as possible. And I'm also going to be uh, putting out what we call the Culinary 101 series, which I'm going to be uh, giving some basic food prep lessons, uh, how to cut an onion the proper way, um, tips and tricks, um, different things you can do to speed things up, all in, the, in the, uh, the process of trying to provide your family with a hot meal in a really, really short amount of time. Because, I mean, let's face it, when you get home from work, nobody feels like cooking. And I can attest to that myself. Because, as I said in my intro, that I'm a professional chef. I've been cooking my whole life. Um, I've been in five different states. And I've worked in resorts, casinos, hotels, restaurants, um, pretty much the whole gamut. So I've learned quite a few tricks along the way. And more importantly, many, many, many time-saving uh, tricks along the way as well. All right, so we got the peppers diced up. Now we're just gonna get the broccoli prep. And I'm gonna be using a little uh, oriental steamer basket for the broccoli. So I've already rinsed the broccoli off, so all I'm gonna do is cut it into the small florets, okay? Which we are going to slightly steam uh, just to get them cooked a little bit and blanched. And then we're gonna put them in with the sauteed peppers and that's going to be a nice sweet crunchiness from the peppers and also it's going to be a, just a bounty, bounty of color. Okay. And cooking at home here, I'm a firm believer in the paper towels. I like the fact that it's all disposable. I don't constantly keep on uh, having to clean a dirty rag or whatnot. But cleaning your cutting board and cleaning as you go is probably the most important thing you can do for the sake of speed. All right, so we've got that ready to go. Now, I haven't yet washed the mushrooms, so all I'm gonna do is a quick rinse. And we're gonna be using these mushrooms right away, so, uh, you don't have to worry about drying them or anything like that. Now to slice the mushroom, I like to utilize every piece of the mushroom that's there. All right, when I say that, I like to take the little stem. Some people discard the stem, okay? But it's still part of the mushroom. I'm not out to win any culinary competitions. So I do kind of like to just slice those, all right? And again, when you're paying for the meal and you're paying for the mushroom, you know, you don't want to throw anything away. And that goes, for anything, no matter what we're doing, uh, especially you know your proteins, the fish, you don't want to waste any of those hard-earned dollars that you, you paid for the items. So, part of my tips and tricks are all about how to save as much money as you can. Now, these particular stems, I'm just going to keep these separate because they're going to go into a different sauce that I'll be making down the road. All right, but again, I'm not going to throw them away, so I'm just going to keep them along the side of the bowl like that. Now we're just going to slice them up. And again, we're not looking for perfection here. What we're looking for is uniformity. Now some people take a little slice of the mushroom like that so it sits flat. It's all good. But if you flatten it off at the stem point, you really don't have to worry about that. So now we got the mushroom sliced. Okay, we've got the broccoli prepped. We're going to cut our lemon, and how we're going to cut it is in just a couple of wedges, number one, and also a couple of slices. So the slices I'm going to save for later, I'm going to use those for our garnish. Okay, and then I just need to have a couple of lemon wedges. So what I like to do again, uh, as to not waste the lemon, I'm going to keep it in the, the, uh, the hole or the, the round uh, shape here, and I'm just going to cut off a piece that I can cut into small little wedges for uh, squeezing. Again, it's all about not wasting and just having uh, the most utilization for the product that you can. Okay, so now we've got our lemons ready to go. We've got the mushrooms, broccoli, the peppers, or pe 
Reggiana Parmesan cheese. Next we're going to take our flour and that's going to be seasoned. All I do with the flour, again, it's, I like a little bit of seasoning. No matter what it is you're going to cook, you've got to use a little bit of seasoning. All right. Now, for something like this, a franchise, and especially when it's a fish dish, you don't want it to be too strong because the fish is very delicate. So, a little bit of kosher salt. I got a little bit of fresh cracked black pepper. I put black pepper on just about everything that's edible, with the exception of cold cereal. But it's good. And again, because it's fish, I always use a little bit of Old Bay Spice. And again, this is just to season the flour up. Okay, that we're going to dredge it. All right, next up, we're going to be just uh, whisking our egg a little bit. So again, before I dip the whip into the egg, I'm just going to give this a little stir. And this incorporates all those spices into the flour. Okay, so then now we've got our two eggs, and all we're going to do with the eggs is crack. Because the eggs are for dredging, or well, we dredge in the flour and then dip in the egg. And again, I'm a huge component of just cleaning as you go, clean as you go, clean as you go. All right, and I'm just going to whisk these together with a couple of different exceptions. And what we're going to do is add to this the fresh chives that we went outside and picked out in my, my wife's garden. And the chives had, had that little bit of uh, that, that strong onion flavor, as well as provide some brilliant green color, just a little bit of garnish, just to pop it a little bit. And you don't need much. A little bit goes a long way. All right, and I like to put a little bit of the Parmesan cheese right in the egg dip. Okay, now, now this egg dip is ready to go. So what we're going to do is the, the cloud will get dipped in flour, dredged in flour, then dipped in the egg, and then right into the hot pan. So All right, so now I'm going to get the fish ready. So what I like to do is whenever I work with any fish or a chicken for that matter and I'm using a cutting board, I like to keep the cutting board relatively uh, uh, free of bacteria, free of raw products so I don't cross contaminate. So one little trick that I do, I douse my cutting board with just a little bit of water, just a little bit now, and I take a piece of plastic wrap, just ordinary plastic wrap, and I go ahead and I cover the cutting board with that what I'm doing by uh, adding this to the cutting board, I'm totally protecting it now from any raw product. This is something that I, I've always done. Again, it prevents cross-contamination and I like to just um, you know, work quickly as I go. So having to change cutting boards uh, back and forth, it could be a little bit of a time-consuming uh, thing. Okay, so I got the fresh cod. I'm gonna go ahead and slice off that first tail. Now I'm going to use the flat part of the fish today because it's going to be sauteed and I'm looking for something that's going to cook quickly. So I'm going to keep this big, uh, large portion right here uh, for a later date, maybe for some fish and chips or maybe for, we'll slice it and maybe cut it into some medallions or either way, we're going to save this for another day. Because this, but don't forget, was a whole pound of cod. That's a lot of cod and it's just my wife and I. So. Just going to wrap that up. Always get all the air out that you possibly can. I like to double wrap. Okay, going to roll that up and set that aside for later use. All right, so we're going to go over to the stove, and the number one top priority, first thing you do whenever cooking is get your pans hot. So we're going to go ahead and fire the stove up. We're going to put the saute pan on high, 
And this back burner stove we're going to put on high also. And that's going to be for some boiling water. So I'm just going to go to the sink. And this is going to be for uh, steaming the vegetables, the, the broccoli. Okay, so just a little bit of water. Just going to put that right on the stove and get that boiling away. All right. Okay. So while that pan is heating up, I'm going to start dredging the fish in the flour and then dipping it in the egg. And we're going to put it right in the hot pan and we're going to be golden, no pun intended. All right, so this pan is getting really hot right now. You can see, I take it off, that's actually a little bit of smoke coming from this, the stove itself. So what I'm going to do is add a little bit of extra virgin olive oil to the pan. And this is how you're going to be able to tell if it's really hot. If that just sits in the pan, uh, it, that tells you that it's really a little bit still too cold. But if that oil just dances all around, pretty much like that, you can tell that that pan's nice and hot. Now, we need enough to cook the egg, but not enough to, uh, to drown the whole product. So you can see that's just dancing all around the pan. So what I'm going to do is just get the whole pan covered with that. And I'm just going to put this aside. I turn the stove off. Now I'm going to get my fish and my flour. Okay, I got my fish and my flour and my egg wash. Just going to give the egg wash another little stir to get that nice and incorporated. Okay, so you want to be close to the pan when you do this because it's really a, it's a, a, a one, two, three deal. So one being going into the flour. So first thing I'm going to do is grab the flour. Now I'm going to turn the pan back on. Okay. I don't need to turn it on high now, so I'm going to cut it back to about like number six or so. And you can see that little bit of uh, cheese is just melting away there. So what we try to do is keep, like we say, one dry, one wet. So one hand we're going to try to keep dry. And I use my left hand for that so that I can save my right hand for the dipping into the flour. I'm sorry. So I keep my left hand dry. And you want to get all that flour nice and coated. That entire fish is going to be coated with the flour. Okay, I'm going to put that into the egg wash. Again, my dry hand, pick up the fish, just dredge it in the flour. Okay, nice and easy, but we're coating it entirely. I'm going to put that in the egg wash also. So now, I have my wet hand, and that's ready to go. So I want to make sure that this fish, that the flour that's on the fish is completely now covered with the egg wash. Now the idea is the flour sticks to the fish, the egg sticks to the flour. So that's going to be a nice little coating, OK? So you just want to make sure you're not seeing any loose flour, OK? I'm going to put that right into the pan. I like to turn it just a little bit. Now, try to arrange the fish in the pan so that it's geometrical, so you're going to be able to flip it easier, OK? Notice so i got big end here, big end down there. Put a little bit more egg on that. OK. Now, this isn't going to take long at all, so again, we're cleaning as we go. I just shake it just a little bit so you can see it's not sticking. Our water back here is boiling nicely, so I'm just going to go ahead and turn that off for a second. I've also turned the oven on. I just have the oven on 350 because we're going to just finish this fish in the oven. Now, another little tips, tricks, and time savers. I have what I call, or what is called, uh, it's a fish spatula. Alright, this batch is very, 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 very thin, so it enables it to get under the fish without breaking it too much. So I'm just going to look underneath, take a little peek. We want that to get nice and brown. Alright, I like to keep lifting the fish up, bring the hot oil to the one side, 
and get the hot oil underneath the fish. If you see if I lift it up, you can see the pan. You want to keep the hot oil under that. And that hot oil is what's going to cook it and brown it nicely and keep it nice and even. Okay, we'll take another little look. Oh, it's getting there. It's just looking beautiful. Okay. You see underneath, it's getting nice and brown. Just another second. This side of the fish that you see up is what you call the skin side of the fish. So you always want to put what we call the bone side of the fish in the pan first because you don't want to have to keep flipping fish over. And the bone side of the fish is really the nicest looking piece. You see that? I just shake that. All right. Now you can see, missed a little bit of a spot here, but that's all going to cook. Put a little hot oil on that. All right. And again, I don't want to keep on flipping it back and forth because eventually that fish is going to break. But this is looking absolutely beautiful. So now we're just going to let the bottom part brown a little bit. Okay. And I'm going to put that on a non-stick pan and we're going to pop that in the oven. So meanwhile, again, this isn't going to take very long. I'm going to go ahead and put the water back on boil. And we've got our broccoli, which I have in a little steamer. I'm going to put the lid on the steamer. Pop that right in the water like that. Okay, that's going to start to steam. And again, when I'm working with the fish, I like to pick up one side. See the pan there? I like that whole pan to be covered with the oil to keep the cooking process nice and even. See the pan? I want that pan to be covered with oil. So, you hear that sizzle? That's a happy sizzle. And you never, ever, ever want to put anything into a cold pan. So what happens really is just it sticks to the pan. You know, the idea is to get it in a hot pan so number one, it sears, and by searing it, you're locking in all the juices and the flavor. If you don't get the pan hot, it's going to heat up as it cooks to the pan, and literally it's going to stick and it's just going to be a mess. All right? I'm also very, very, very uh, influential about one pot cookery or maybe two pots, because guess what? When you look around the kitchen here, you don't see a whole bunch of little sous chefs running around doing all the work for me. And you at home don't have all those little sous chefs running around trying to help you either. So that means you're washing the pans also. So you want to keep the pan usage to a minimal also. Now, this is looking really good. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the fire off. Now if I was just going to eat the fish like it is, I would keep this in the pan and put the whole pan in the oven. And what we're going to do is use the same pan to make our sauce. And again, this is a non-stick pan, non-stick oven pan. All right, that fish patch you can get right underneath. And you just want to get it on your non-stick pan, okay? Now, all this is going to be part of the flavor of our sauce. All right, so I'm going to pop this right into the oven. This will only take just a couple minutes because of the way that the fish is so flat. Now in this pan, that's a lot of oil, so I don't really want all that oil, so I'm going to discard some of that oil. And I try not to put that down the drain, so I put that in the garbage. And to that, we're going to add our mushrooms now. Okay, turn the pan back on. A little salt and pepper. Now for this sauce, number one, you've got the, the pan reduction, which is going to be part of the flavor. We're also going to add to that, I'm going to just saute these mushrooms just a little bit. And the primary flavor is going to come from the lemon juice and the mushrooms and the butter. So let's check our little steamer pot. Look at that broccoli. I'm going to cut that off. All right, so now we're going to add the chicken stock. But before I put the chicken stock in, I'm going to do what we call dusting with flour. This is going to help to thicken just a little bit. 
I just dusted it with a little flour. And what you're doing essentially is making a roux in that pan. And you want to make sure all that flour disappears or cooks. Now when I add that chicken stock and it boils, you're going to see that thicken. Hopefully not too much. Ready? Okay, so now we're going to add the lemon juice. The lemon juice is totally your preference. I like a lot of lemon juice. So in this dish, I like to put uh, a pretty good amount. When I say good amount, that's going to be two of these wedges. Look at that. It's just absolutely delicious looking. Alright, as that cooks down now, I'm just going to set this aside. I'm going to move this back over to the stove. And again, I try not to use too many pans, so I'm going to utilize this uh, steamer pot and the saute pan here two times. You can see. Look how quick that broccoli steamed. It took no time at all in that little steamer pot. We'll keep that like that. Now we're just going to discard the water. And we're going to put the pan back on and we're going to use the pan now as a saute pan instead of a double steamer. All right. You want to get all the, the water out of there because we're going to put some extra virgin olive oil in there. Again, the pan's getting hot. It actually already is hot because we're boiling it. Just a little bit of oil, and this is extra virgin olive oil. This is, this is uh, one of the number one foods that you could possibly eat that is so good for you. I once had a doctor tell me, you could literally, John, you could drink olive oil and not get enough of it. Uh, I chose not to drink it. I like to cook with it. But anyway, now that oil is nice and hot. So we're just going to put a little bit of the red pepper, a little bit of the green pepper. Okay. Again. Hear the sizzle? If you don't hear the sizzle, the pan's not hot enough. A little salt, just a little bit. A little pepper. Okay. You want to keep those going around in the hot pan. And it's just going to be like a saute. We also have a little bit of garlic. Everybody loves garlic. The only people that I had that don't like garlic are the people that are allergic to it. And yes, there are people allergic to it, so I'm very sorry for those people. But now you see I've got a nice saute. The peppers are just starting to get translucent. The garlic is starting to, to brown just a very, very little bit. All right, I want that garlic to cook. All right, then we're just going to add in our steamed broccoli florets. All right, I like this with just a touch more, a little bit of salt. A little bit of black pepper. Okay. Alright, so now we got the, the sweetness and the crunchiness of the peppers. We've got the delicate of, uh, delicateness of the broccoli. And it's a green vegetable. So it's all around. It's good for us. It looks good. And it's going to be awesome. So now I'm going to pull our pan back over, which is for our sauce. Now I'm going to take just a little bit more of the fresh chives. I'm going to just put the chives right in the pan. Okay. And now we're going to take a little bit of whole butter And this whole butter is going to be to finish the sauce. So the whole butter I'm going to take and just drop it in my flour just for a second. This is called making a burr money, which means, uh, or kind of like a raw roux also. But this flour on the butter is going to help thicken our sauce also. So I'm just going to work that in with my hand. Now this you just have to work real quickly. And that just has to be worked in that whole butter like that. And you can see that the sauce is sticking up right before your eyes, as well as giving the flavor. But you really want to keep the pan working 
because you don't want the butter to just melt. You want it to incorporate into the sauce. All right, so we're just about there. See that came to a boil? It's going to be unbelievable. All right, so now we're going to check the fish. I'm going to cut that pan off. Fish is looking mighty fine. So we're going to bring that out. Now the worst thing you could do to fish is overcook it, or anything for that matter. So I just go by the push test, all right? And if you're not sure, you, know, you can always take a thermometer if you want to go by the guidelines and do it the professional right way. Or since you're at home having fun, and you just want to be sure, you can just cut into it. And you're just going to look and see it. That fish is flaky. It's wonderful. And don't forget, we're going to heat it up in the sauce also. So now I'm just going to take that, this beautiful, beautiful fish, put it back in the sauce. And all we're going to do is reheat it in the sauce. Or we'll just let it incorporate in the sauce. Put that back on for just a second. All right, so we're there. Now comes the fun part. Plating up. Okay, so again, we're having fun with food. So there is no real special way to do this. There's no, uh, there's no test going to be given after this. So what I like to do is since we're using the broccoli and the peppers is put those down first. Okay. And always save a little bit of your colorful uh, veggies for the end so you can put on top and garnish the plate real nice. Okay, now we've got our fish. Okay, I'm going to be careful not to break it. So I'm just going to have that coming right over top of the broccoli like that. Okay, now I'm going to take some of the mushrooms and have them kind of cascading off the top of the fish. And this is technically dinner for two. All right. And I always like to ladle the sauce over top of the product. I don't just dump with the pan. And the number one reason I don't like to dump with the pan is because then it runs all down the side of the pan and then it winds up burning on your stove. So there we have it. This is fresh Filet of cod franchise served with a broccoli and sweet bell pepper saute, fresh mushrooms, and that's in a lemon butter sauce. And there you have it. Fresh filet of cod franchise with sweet bell pepper and broccoli saute and fresh sliced mushrooms in a lemon butter sauce. So eat well, be healthy, and God bless.